How do we find the cardinalities of some basic sets in set builder notation? That's what we'll be going over today. Here's just a quick look at the sets we'll be looking at. This is a viewer requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. I didn't take these sets exactly from the viewer request, I just slightly changed them so the ideas should be similar. Remember that the cardinality of a set is just the number of elements in the set. So, to find the cardinalities of the sets we'll be looking at, we just have to figure out what these sets are and how many elements are they going to have. And in fact, we don't actually even have to write out all of these sets to determine their cardinalities. For example, our first set D contains all elements D such that D is a day of the week. How many days of the week are there? Well, there are seven. So the cardinality of the set D, written like this, is equal to seven. If we did want to write the set D out, then it might look something like this. And I used three letter abbreviations for the days of the week. So that's a very basic example. The cardinality of a set is the number of elements it contains. The set D, by definition, in this set builder notation, D contains the days of the week. There are seven days of the week, so the cardinality of D written like that is equal to seven. All right, on to the next example. Our set S contains a handful of different softwares. Microsoft softwares, to be exact, Access, Word, OneNote, Calendar, and Outlook. What is the cardinality of this set? Well, it's just the number of elements it contains. If we count them up, access, that's one, word, that's two, OneNote, that's three, calendar, that's four, and outlook, that's five. So the cardinality of this set, the cardinality of S, is equal to five. It contains five elements. Note that this is called roster notation, where a set is defined by just writing out all of its elements. When a set is written like this, its different elements will be separated by commas. However, we have to be careful because sometimes the elements of a set themselves might contain commas. In those cases, it becomes crucial to identify where each element starts and where the element stops. I talk more about that in my lesson on identifying the elements of a set, which I highly recommend. I'll leave a link to that in the description. All right, on to the next set where we've got a bit more of mathy set builder notation. The set A contains all numbers five times K where K is a positive integer less than nine. Remember the typical form of set builder notation. On the left, we're given what a general element of our set looks like, in this case, a multiple of five, and on the right, we might be given some additional restrictions. Like in this case, K has to be a positive integer less than nine. What do the positive integers look like? Well, the positive integers are this set here. They contain one, two, three, and so on. So let's write out our set A. Will it contain five times one? That's the first positive integer, one. Yes, it will, because one is a positive integer less than nine. So five times one, or five, will be an element of A. Additionally, 2 is a positive integer less than 9, so our set will contain 10, and continuing in that way, we have 5 times 3, 5 times 4, which is 20, 5 times 5, which is 25, 5 times 6, which is 30, 5 times 7, which is 35, 5 times 8, which is 40, 5 times 9 is 45, but 9 is not less than 9. We have now written all products 5 times k, where k is a positive integer less than 9. So that's the end of the set. Just to re-emphasize how the elements of this set are defined, we'll point out a couple. That's 5 times 2, that's 5 times 5, right there is 5 times 7, so it just contains all numbers of the form 5 times k, where k is a positive integer less than 9. Then if we count the elements of our set A, we'll find that it has 8 of them, so the cardinality of A is equal to 8. And in fact, we didn't even have to write out the set A in order to figure out that it has eight elements. We could have just noticed by its definition, we'll have a different product, five times K, for all positive integers K less than nine. There are eight positive integers less than nine, so certainly our set would have eight elements. All right, what do we got next? We've got a set C. This just contains all elements C such that C is an ocean. 
Now, this definition isn't super good or specific because it depends how we classify the oceans. But a very common way of separating them is into the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic, and Southern Antarctic Oceans. So those are the names of our oceans. How many are there? If we count them up, one, two, three, four, five. So the cardinality of C containing the names of the oceans is equal to five. Again, it's just the number of elements that the set contains. Just a couple more examples here. Our set P, this contains all prime numbers that are less than 31. Recall that prime numbers are integers greater than one whose only factors are one and themselves. So if we start writing out our set P, two is the first prime number, then we have three, then five, then seven, then 11, then 13, then 17, then 19, then 23, then 29, then 31. But wait a minute, we don't actually want 31 in our set because our set only contains primes that are less than 31. So we can actually erase 31, we don't need that, and our set stops at 29. If you're not very familiar with prime numbers, this would take a little longer to figure out, but most of you are probably pretty familiar with them. Just to make sure we're clear on primes, again, these are integers greater than one whose only factors are one in themselves. For example, the only factors of 13 are one and 13. Those are the only two numbers you can multiply together to get 13. A number like 27 is not prime because it has factors other than one in itself, like three and nine. With that said, what is the cardinality of our set of primes that are less than 31? Well, cardinality is just the number of elements, so we just have to count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the cardinality of P is equal to 10. It's got 10 elements. All right, now how about this set R, which contains every real number? A moment's thought reminds us that certainly the cardinality of the real numbers is infinite. There are infinitely many real numbers. Just the natural numbers containing 1, 2, 3, and so on is an infinite set. And it would seem that there are way more real numbers than there are natural numbers, since between any two natural numbers, there's an infinite number of real numbers. Like between one and two, there are numbers like 1.0001, 1.0001. There are so many numbers we couldn't possibly list them. And if you've only just begun to study set theory, you may be surprised to learn that the cardinality of the real numbers, an infinite cardinality, is actually greater than the cardinality of the natural numbers, even though they're both infinite. Some infinities are bigger than others, which is one of the most wonderful results we'll talk about as we continue to study set theory. So both the reals and the naturals are infinite sets, but one of them has more elements than the other. Pretty cool. Now, one last set we'll take a quick look at. This one is clearly quite a mess. In the lesson I mentioned earlier on how to identify the elements of a set, we go over how to find the cardinality of this nasty set and some others that are also pretty ugly. I recommend checking that lesson out. Again, there'll be a link in the description. Try figuring out the cardinality of this set for yourself, and now in just a minute, I'll quickly show you the solution. Finding the cardinality of this set comes down to being able to identify its elements, and its elements are here. There's one element, there's two elements, there's three elements, and there's four elements. And so the cardinality of S is equal to four. Notice, like I was saying earlier, these are some elements which themselves contain commas, which is part of what makes it so tricky. But in any event, I hope this lesson helped you understand how to find the cardinalities of some simple sets and maybe got you some more comfortable with set builder notation. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.